This is a circus. It's a national disgrace. It is a high-tech lynching. Blacks who in any way deign to think for themselves. And it is a message that unless you kowtow to an old order, you will be lynched, destroyed, caricatured by a committee of the U.S. U.S. Senate rather than hung from a tree. What an amazing American. Of course, that was Judge Clarence Thomas who was nominated to the highest court in the land. And because he was a black man who dared to be a conservative, he was put through a high-tech lynching at the hands of none other, yes, than the current incumbent of the White House. As far as I'm concerned, that should have disqualified Senator Joe Biden from ever holding public office again. I'm Sebastian Gorka. We're discussing the state of race relations in America here on America First, one-on-one, -on -one, with a very special guest. We are always delighted to have him in studio from Project 21, Horace Cooper. Welcome back in our new studio. I love it. This is amazing. You like this? Yes. He, said, he said the word wow when he came <laughs> in here. Wow, that's how much he enjoyed it. Well, thank you for your honesty. Thank you for always being such a supporter of this show. Um, I didn't know. We had like a Vulcan mind meld at a distance because I was... I I knew you were coming on the show. I wanted to have a couple of clips to play to you regarding race relations in America. And I chose that one of, of the current uh, president, uh, President Biden, which kind of ties in nicely to your imminent book, because I think he used the phrase, put y'all back in chains, which is the title of your book, How Biden's Policies Harm Black Americans. Uh, your last book was a, a, a runaway bestseller, thanks to it being canceled for a few months. That that is how Trump is making black America great again. Tell us uh, why that bestseller wasn't enough and why you're having to write this one about the current president. Give us a couple of examples, because I thought the Democrat Party was the party of the minorities, the parties of the, the little man and, and caring for minorities in America. So here's what I'm going to say with all due candor. I haven't ever believed that the left really cared about minorities, but a lot of black Americans are still under this illusion. The good news is the evidence is becoming so overwhelming of the lack of concern, the lack of care, the lack of prioritization that you are seeing look first with Hispanics, but also with black Americans fleeing from the party of the left. Our president made this statement when he was vice president, saying that the Republican Party and the conservative movement and the ideas of liberty were just a fancy masquerade for an attempt to re-enslave black America. Now, did the New York Times call him out for this? Did MSNBC do a segment saying, why is the president creating this kind of racial animus and division in America? No, they didn't. In fact, much of mainstream America has cheered on this kind of dialogue, creating the dissension. Why? Because they want the policies, not policies that are going to help black Americans get more pickup trucks, as I explain in my book, How Donald Trump is Making Black America get Great Again. We saw during the four years of the Trump administration, record numbers of black Americans getting their own home, going to see grandma for Thanksgiving, something that woke America takes for granted, remember? They're the ones that are saying the kinds of things you have to do when you go see grandma because she's so intolerant because they're assuming everybody goes for Thanksgiving. Black America set record lows during the Obama administration for the number who got to just go see grandma for Thanksgiving. We saw record numbers of black Americans Three years in a row, the record broke itself for how many blacks got to go on their first August vacation. I mean, it's remarkable the train transition between what black America experienced then and what black America is experiencing now. But the mainstream media and the progressives 
in the uh, education establishment and other elite, elite areas, they're interested in the Green New Deal. Yeah. They're interested in transgenderism. They're interested in all of these issues and the concerns of black Americans go to the back of the political bus. So we'll talk about your new book about Biden, but let's go back to your previous one, how Trump is making black America great again. Can you explain to me, because I, I need a little bit of assistance here, how after four incessant years of the then incumbent being called an, ins uh, an Islamophobe, a misogynist, a nationalist, uh, a white supremacist, and then eventually a Nazi, that he received more support in the 2020 election right. from black and Hispanic Americans than any incumbent Republican since the 1960s. So uh, what, what was it about him that made so many members of the minority communities kind of have that wake up moment? It's the delivery. It's the consequence. It's the results. When you are looking around, I mentioned this in my book, that there are black Americans who are saying, hey, my son or my nephew has finally left my basement <laughs> and is moving out to their own apartment. Record numbers of black Americans started their own jobs, started their own careers, started their own businesses. This is a sea change. And one of the reasons Joe Biden is so unpopular today with the minority community is it's not like as bad as it was under Obama. Under Obama, we had a stagnant economy. We have a stagnant economy now. But under George W. Bush, the economy had start, started to slow down. So the eight years of the Obama administration was more like the frog in the pot cooking and suddenly finds out that it's been boiled to death without realizing it. Guess what? A hot economy, opportunity, uh, records. By the way, when I tell you how great things were going for black America, I don't want people to be under the misimpression that it means that that's the only priority. Donald Trump's administration helped everyone. everyone right. If you were the least, you got helped the most. In the Obama years, only the most made progress and everybody else was squeezed. So it's the contrast between how hot things were with the Trump economy and how terrible they are now that is making people jump out of that bullet. It's the rapid deceleration that is most obvious. So help me with this. If there are people are waking up to the realities of a Democrat party, why has it taken 60 years? This, this is the thing I, I never managed to, 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 to get a decent explanation for. If, if you, what you said, the very first sentence is that they say they care for the minorities, but they don't. Why has it taken 60 years for members of that minority to say, you know what, they preach about caring, but they don't really? Well, a lot hasn't been really paid to the fact that there was a push among black Americans toward the Republican Party during the Reagan years. Yeah. And one of the phenomenon that happened was the explosive growth that occurred. The issue has been that both parties have not really been in favor of growing the economy. Some mismanage it more than others, but all of America has really sort of been in a stagnant situation. And it is that explosive growth that attracts the attention of people. So if you had to pick, this party says every day how much they love me and I can't get a job. That party says nothing about how much they love me and I can't get a job. Guess what? you're gonna go likely with the party that says, I love you. And what the left has been doing is trying to get away with the rhetoric and not yeah. actually delivering the food on the table. He's senior fellow with the National Center for Public Policy Research and Project 21. The first book was How Trump is Making Black America Great Again, a bestseller. The new one is Put Y'all Back in Chains, How Biden's Policies Harm Black Americans. I'm Sebastian Gorka. This is America First.